Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. If you clicked on this video, I am assuming that you want to know how reading the Bible has definitely changed my life and how it can change yours too. So let's get right to it. So before this video, I did sit down and write a couple of notes to how the Bible changed my life. Now I came up with three main bullet points. The first one is conviction. Um, conviction, I believe, has a negative feel around to it, but the real thing, conviction is good. It means that the Holy Spirit is working through you and it's letting you know what you're doing wrong and how you can better yourself. I would like to start by reading John 16 verses 8 through 9 and it says, And when He comes, referring to the Holy Spirit when it says He, He will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. So by that, it clearly states there that the Holy Spirit will convict us. I know I'm just repeating myself at this point. Now you may be asking, convict us of what? So those will come with reading the Bible. So ever since I felt this conviction of reading what God expects of us and God, what God wants from us, I have been more careful what I say, what I think, how I say it. Now along with that, another Bible verse that I would like to add to that is Romans chapter 12 verse 2 and it reads don't copy the behavior and customs of this world but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good pleasing and perfect which is amazing honestly but I love how it says don't copy the behaviors and the customs of this world and I believe that comes with conviction like if I see that my friend over there decides to cuss online it doesn't mean I have to do it why because I get convicted that that's not right that I shouldn't be doing that therefore I won't do that why because it's unpleasing to God so that's something very important that I've learned and that I've been trying to practice and I say practice because it is hard it is a struggle to sometimes bite your tongue or be like whoa why am I thinking that I don't want to do that like Romans chapter 12 verse 2 said you know don't copy don't don't be like them um it's hard for me because sometimes I want to do stuff, I want to say stuff, I want to publish stuff on social media, you know, and social media is just... <sighs> but anyways, moving on to my second, humbleness. Now this is a big one. The Bible mentions it a lot. Here's how reading the Bible showed me humbleness. Now upon reading the book of 1 Samuel and 2 Samuel, I'm still in 2 Samuel, I haven't finished it yet, but from what I've seen so far, I've been following the story of David, famous story from David and Goliath. Now he's King David. And I just love the way that King David prays. He is so humble with his words. He is so, I, I, I don't know, I feel like I'm falling in love with King David. I just, I love his humbleness, guys. And he is a king. One, one day, I, I was talking to Isaac while we were reading it, and I thought to myself, like, wow, like, he was an actual king. Like, I'm not a king. Well, um, a queen, I mean. But he was a king that had riches in this world. Like, he literally had riches in this world. But yet, he knew that there was a superior. He knew that compared to God, and he calls himself a dog. Because compared to God, he knew he was nothing a dog like he says like god why have you decided to bless my family we're just a bunch of sinners like god why and that to me is just so humbling how a king that has riches in this world that has everything he wanted that had second samuel chapter 7 verse 18 who am i O sovereign god lord and what is my family that you have brought me this far? Now here in my note, I wrote, I love the great majesty that David has towards the Lord. It's a beautiful thing that the Lord loves us so much. Why would I want to sin against him? I would love to glorify his name, exalt him and him only. May my life bring him honor and glory. And that just reminds me that like I was saying, even though he had everything, he still humbled himself on God's feet. I had to go and get my Bible because there was something in here that I didn't add that I really recommend for you guys to go back and read. And because it just blew me away. Okay, I really suggest for you guys to go back to your Bible, whether it's on your phone, whether you have an actual Bible. And I suggest that you go back and read 2 Samuel chapter 7 verses 18 through 29 it's incredible right here in my bible it says david david's prayer of thanks and that just spoke to me and how sometimes i might say really bold prayers you know asking god for this this and that and that and yes it's okay to ask god for things but also give thanks and be and be grateful to god 
you know, just have that humbleness in your heart that, Lord, thank you for answering that prayer. Thank you for carrying my, my aunt, my mom. Thank you, Lord, for blessing me with this car. You know, may we not forget that God owes us nothing and that God has given to us out of his goodness, out of his love. And that's just incredible, guys. Okay, moving on to my third bullet, which is the longest one and the one that everybody knows from the Bible, I guess, I am assuming. So guys, I'm gonna show you my notes. This are my first two bullets and then this is for my third one. It's a little longer, not that long, but you get the idea. So anyways, the third thing that God has revealed to me and how it has changed my life and i keep working on these guys everything that i'm saying right now I, i'm working on it i'm i'm not saying that, that i'm perfect at them that i've mastered them i don't think it'll ever happen the third thing that the bible teaches me is here it is drum roll to be loving so i wrote here jesus repeatedly calls us to love our neighbor as we love ourselves so one thing that i have tried to apply in my life based on this if i wouldn't say it to that person's face then i shouldn't be saying it at all because at that point i'm just spreading gossip and that's not loving on them why would i want to be talking bad about someone me talking bad about someone is not loving them not respecting their person so that's one thing that i really try to apply you know if i'm not gonna say it to your face i'm not even gonna say it at all are things that are incorrect and it goes with bullet number one which is conviction and it goes perfectly with this one guys matthew chapter 22 verses 37 through 40 and it says jesus replied you must love the lord your god with all your heart all your soul and all your mind this is the first commandment and the greatest commandment a second is equally important love your neighbor as yourself the entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two principles so what do we get from that it goes back to it's everything is tied in if you love god that much then you want to please him which then you'll get convicted if you're doing something wrong, right? And you want to be humbled against him because you love him with all your heart and all your mind. And then the second one is you must love your neighbor as you love yourself. So it goes back to that. You know, if I wouldn't talk bad about that person because I wouldn't want anyone talking bad about me, why would I do it about them, you know? So everything is tied in and, and it, sometimes it's so common sense, so logical, it's so basic, but then why don't we all just do it if it's so common sense, basic and logical? We live in a world where we're so distracted where we're so caught up that it just becomes easy to spread gossip, to talk back, to backstab, to... I don't know, the list goes on, come on. Okay, so this next one is pretty good. I wrote it myself, I take full credit. Anyways, here we go. As I wrote, after reading the Bible, my spirit is just on fire that I would hate to immediately ruin it with sin. Therefore, when I read the Bible, I tend to be more cautious, you know, and apply it to my life because even the Bible says, you know, if you're just reading scripture and but you're not applying it to your life, then it's just foolish. So make sure you're applying whatever you're reading. Now, I also added on my notes, I put, now since I am a sinner, I do eventually sin, but therefore it is very important to always come back to the Bible and just refire your spirit. And it's just so wonderful, guys. The more you read it, the more you apply it, the more you like cleanse yourself, your mind, you get rid of those toxic things that the world has planted in there. Get out, get those weeds out of there. Get those seeds out of there. The sooner you start doing that, you just start feeling such a light sense of your spirit and you start having more harmony and peace in your life you start seeing that little things sometimes don't matter and that's something i also want to talk about but that's another thing but if you want to know what i mean read the book of ecclesiastes that's such a such a great book it gave me such perspective when i read it i just decided to let go of certain things that i've been holding on forever and just being like it's vapor but if you want to know what i'm talking about read that book the bible verse of matthew chapter 7 verses 12 do unto others as you would like them to do to you so so i did this little thing that i thought it was really helpful for me and i put so love unto others as you would like for them to love unto you and i added so give unto others as you would like to be given to you and then lastly so help others as you would like to be helped yourself we need to love on everyone we need to be humble and we need to have that conviction. Don't get too caught up in the negative feel of the word conviction. It's a blessing. It's a blessing from God, from the Holy Spirit. And helps us to be more righteous. And helps us to be 
clean in God's eyes. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. But more importantly, because this is the word of God, I ask that you share this video. So yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. Bye.